You ever lay in bed with the want to do something, but also the want to do nothing? Feels as though our brain is at war, but it's at war with itself. We know there is something we need to do, and we want to be the type of person who deals with things that need to be done. Therefore, we want to do something, but yet we sit here, also wanting to do nothing. The battle ranges on with both sides taking turns having the upper hand. It's like a tug of war, but you're on both sides, and since it's evenly matched, the rope doesn't ever move far enough in one direction to decide a winner. Limbo. That's the only word I could think of as I laid there feeling this way. The state of feeling uncertain or undecided. Usually at some point I break out of limbo, being freed from its clutches. Sometimes it's unconscious, other times it's a conscious push in one direction, hoping the inertia will carry me forward. But today, that did not happen. Instead, I was consumed into the deepest depths of limbo. I would describe the feeling of limbo as being painfully uncomfortable. My body knows that this is not its purpose, to lay here, only adding mass to an object that I call my bed. Doing something is always better than doing nothing. A quote from my video on how to actually develop life-changing habits. While I'll admit at the moment this thought didn't occupy my mind consciously, I believe it was there unconsciously. So like a good cog within a system that is in and of itself a cog of infinite systems, I decided to spin or rather move. Part of me feels as though it was a coping mechanism, but the hope was that as long as I moved I would end up somewhere new, hopefully somewhere better, a place where I would want to be. This movement took me on a ride to the mall where my girlfriend and I would mostly browse. She managed to leave with some clothes, but for some reason I left empty handed. Retrospectively, I think the reason I left empty handed was because of what I was shopping for. Who could have thought that window shopping for a sense of purpose and a feeling of being proud would be so difficult? Two feelings that I would gladly spend every dollar to my name on. A quick drive later and I was home, having spent the currency that is time in exchange for the realization that today's hole was not going to be failed so easily. So like every stereotypical sad boy, I put on my headphones, turned on my favorite sad boy songs, and just laid in bed, allowing myself just to listen and feel. Without visual stimulation, it wasn't long before I would doze off to sleep. An hour would pass and I would lethargically roll myself out of bed, reflecting on the state of limbo that I had been in. Ironically, the motivation to write about this same feeling of limbo would be what got me out of my funk. So I sat down at my desk to write, but habitually I opened up YouTube to my channel, where I would notice that my subscriber count would move from a stagnant 635 subscribers that had been on all day down to 634. I couldn't help but just laugh. The reason it was so funny was because this channel, that number, or rather all the numbers were the reason I was in my funk. So much time, effort, and love are put into each and every one of my videos with the hope that I could help others while selfishly helping myself too. Since the start of this channel, I had told myself that if I could just help one person, I would try to be happy with that. And as the positive comments trickled in, the stories of how my videos caused people to feel, learn, and grow, I, for a very quick moment, would feel proud and happy that my effort hadn't gone wasted. I saw the proof, and I helped someone. Selfishly, or rather humanly, I desired more. More subscribers, more comments, more likes, more views. I couldn't, or rather, I still can't help but feel as though my videos can help more people if they could just see them. Or truthfully, I can't stop feeling as though my videos deserve more. I feel like I'm being scammed, my effort, my time, all to be undercut by some robot whose algorithm determined it was not good enough. A hypocrite and a poser, that is how I feel. Here I am, not listening to my own advice. So how could that same advice help others? I'm greedy and ungrateful. I want more and I'm arrogant enough to believe I deserve more. I can't help but compare myself to others. I see people in the same niche making the same types of videos about the same topic. Some I would absolutely stand by you and say that they're better than mine. But I can't help but feel the gap isn't as big as the numbers tell me. And what about the channels with videos that I believe are worse than mine? Or at least on par, but have tens or hundreds of thousands of views? My eyes tell me one thing, but the algorithm tells me another. An idiot poser. That is how I should have phrased it. To think that I could make a video on how to actually be successful on YouTube, the next video I'm supposed to make. I can see the comments already. Why should I take advice from a guy with only a couple hundred subscribers? Or who does this guy think he is? The part that hurts is that deep down, I know it's true. Until I can prove it, I'll always just be a guy with ideas, but no proof. Perhaps this is another reason why the last video I released, I had so desperately wanted it to succeed, so that when I released this video, I wouldn't feel so phony. The reason I wanted to do this video in the first place was because it was a topic that interested me as someone who managed to get another challenge to a thousand subscribers in three months before deciding to move into content I was more passionate about. Throughout what has been eight months of doing YouTube, I thought I could give some advice since I had watched every video you could see on how to build a successful channel. I felt as though I would have a different perspective, a more reliable one that could help other channels as someone who feels as though they have failed. 
It's so ironic that I sit here saying that I feel as though I failed, but yet I fantasize about making a video about success. And despite all of this, I know that success isn't always linear. Not everyone explodes in a couple months. We may idolize those who have did such things, but I'm gonna adjust my gaze to those who have grinded, the ones who put in all the work and never gave up. I don't think it will be a matter of if I will succeed, it's a matter of when, and if I'll be able to keep pushing until I do, even if that's a longer time away than I would like. I'd rather be the stupid guy who believed in himself and failed than the guy who didn't believe and always wondered what if he had. Although I may feel stupid, and all my effort may be for naught, as long as I never quit, I will never lose.